Welcome back to it. What's up, you guys? Um, I got a great episode for you. Really, really fun. I talked to Wes Hoffman. He's a solo punk rock singer, guitar player, all around guy. Anyway, his story is great. I love, I love getting into it. So before we do, the number is 360-830-6660. Leave me a voicemail. Whatever you want. All right. Let's get to it. All right, Bob, take it away. This is, this is, this is. Wes, thanks for taking the time, dude. I'm so glad you hit me up on email. It took me a minute, but uh, what's happening? So, Wes Hoffman, you're playing music. I know that much, but we met a long time ago. Tell me about Wes Hoffman now. What have you been up to? What are you doing now? Yeah, man. Thank you. I mean, first of all, thanks so much for for having me on, dude. This is this is awesome, and um, you know, I'm a huge fan of MXPX, but also you yourself. And uh, yeah, I'm just stoked to be talking to you, man. So thank you. Yeah, thanks uh, for doing it. <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah. So uh, I guess it has been a little bit a little while. Um, shortly after after you and I met, I think that was around like 2016 when you came out to St. Louis and and did a keynote speech and everything, which was a really awesome event. And, um, you know, you killed it on that and everything. So, uh, but, um, I, I guess it was a couple years after that, I started playing music again. I was always kind of, a um, I, I started playing music when I was younger and then just kind of life got in the way and I got married and all that and was kind of doing the adult thing, you know, as a lot of people do. And, um, I guess in 2018, I started a project with some friends, 2017, um, it was late 2017, and um, started playing music again, and just like that punk rock bug bit me again of, uh, this is really what I love to do, and like I put it on the back burner for so long just for a bunch of other reasons, and uh, recently, uh, you know, at first it kind of just turned into one of those things that uh, we're, gonna just, we're just going to do this to have fun, and we're not really going to try super hard and, you know, me being the kind of person that I am, um, it, it totally, I couldn't keep doing that just for fun. <laughs> I mean, I definitely, <laughs> you know how it is. You start throwing your whole self into it and you get really excited and, and all that. And so we started playing shows. Uh, we started going out of town a little bit and, um, it's really taken off from there. So, um, yeah, I mean, I have more to share, but I'll break there. Yeah, well, Wes Hoffman. I mean, so you're 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 obviously you're using your name, Wes Hoffman. You know, I looked it right up. It's so easy to find. It's obvious that it's you. Um, I looked at your YouTube stuff. I looked at your you know on on your streaming stuff, and it makes sense to me. It's like, yeah, this guy's a solo artist, also, but also has a band. So, like, <clears throat> what does that look like? Where are you at, by the way? Are you because I met you in St. Louis, Missouri? Are you somewhere else now? What's, where's the yeah, band from? I'm still based in St. Louis. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, um, you know, kind of using my name, Wes Hoffman. I mean, normally you, you have like a band name and my reasoning behind just using my own name was I had met so many people in the music industry like yourself, um, through my podcast that I was doing with my buddy, Corey, uh, the strange house. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did a ton of, uh, we went on warp tour one year for like a week and, we were going out to a bunch of music festivals and I thought, well, people, if I start a completely new band um, and I name it whatever, people might not know that it's me. And, um, you know, they might not make the connection that, oh, this is Wes's band. But if I use Wes Hoffman, then people will know, they'll recognize it, you know, just like you said. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, honestly, you're right. At least with me, you're, you're dead on. So, wow. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Because um, I how how would we know as it right these days it's different too because there's so many more artists starting out in their bedroom by themselves not even getting to that band but putting out full band music that they record in their bedroom or whatever maybe they work it out with friends in another you know house down the street or it could be like another state so it is a little different nowadays right like you, it used to be you start a band called the band, whatever it is. Right. So it, it was that not at all a thought. It was just merely, Oh, I've, I've met a lot of people and they've, they know kind of know my name. I think they would recognize it is it, it was just purely that, huh? Uh, it was, it was partly that. And then I've always in the, all the bands that I was in when I was younger, I was always kind of, I was always the front man and like the driving force of the band. Mm -hmm. So I always felt like, 
you know, uh, I, I on, on our recordings, um, I can't play the drums. So I wrote and recorded and played everything on the al- on the EP that we have out now and on our new album that's coming out. Um, I, I recorded all of that except for the drums. So our drummer has uh, played played drums on it. Um, and we had some other people come in on the full length album too, but I always knew like, uh, you know, if, if, if I have a group of guys and if I'm writing on this music, then the, the members can always change if need be. And, um, you know, we might have a different drummer that can't go on a tour or can't play a show or we might, which was just happened. Now we've had three different people play drums mm-hmm. for us. Or if we have a different guitarist, you know, uh, people might come and go, but it'll always be me writing this music um, and I do it exactly like you said, man. Um, I'm, uh, I just have GarageBand on my computer in my studio, and um, you know, I go down there and I'm able to kind of like take the the drummer and add. You can't really do too much with it, and I, I haven't learned how to program drums yet, like yeah. MIDI yet. But um, you know, I can get like the basis of a song. I can get all the vocals and bass and guitars recorded, and then give it to my guys through Google Google Drive or Dropbox, and they can all learn it. And, and it's literally, it's really cool because back in the day you would all just have to get in a room and be like, okay, here's the beat that I'm thinking. And you'd kind of like give them a beat and then you'd say, well, I'm going to do this riff or I've got this chord progression. Can you put a riff over it? And now, uh, it's made this, the songwriting process like so much more streamlined. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, as, as opposed to that. So is, is that how you, do you guys still do it that way? Or (laughs) (laughs) that's, you know, that's an interesting point but uh i'm just thinking about it like what do we do we you know it hasn't changed that much over the years mostly what i do is i write the song on a mostly acoustic guitar could be a guitar electric guitar acoustic guitar but usually it's acoustic guitar sometimes a bass but it's just like the basics of the song and then if if i do have a riff i'll be like okay this is the like that kind of thing you know um um, but the actual process getting into the room, I've got the song written, the lyrics are there, everything's ready to go. Now it's just a matter of how do we play it? Like, this is the song, how do we play it? And I don't put in like drum parts or anything like that. It's more like telling Yuri, all right, Yuri, I was thinking chicka chicka ba, chicka chicka ba, you know, like that kind of stuff. Like, and I'm sure you've done that too. Like that's the way you started probably. That's what you were just describing. Um, we still do that, but it's a, it's sort of a hybrid, like I was saying, because I'm writing the song already, but I'm leaving room for the MXPX guys to to make it sound like MXPX. Because I think if the songwriting does sound like MXPX when it's not MXPX, like if you listen to my other bands like Tumble Down or something, sure. it sounds like me, but it's also played by different people. So it doesn't sound like MXPX. It sounds like an MXPX influenced song that has a different style of playing and, and, and rhythms and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool to experiment with, with those things. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I always feel like it, it changes, especially with the drums and that, that also might change different parts of the song. Like, Cause you know, we're using like automated drums on the demos. So when we get into the studio or we start practicing the songs, um, Hez will kind of add different things to it. And it it always evolves a little bit more and sounds a little bit more fluid than that kind of mechanical automated drums, garage band drums, you know? Um, yeah. So it's, yeah. Um, but question about like just getting into the nitty gritty of like songwriting from bedroom to band. Do you ever have a, an issue where you think a part's going to work one way and then you have a drummer play it and you're like, that just doesn't feel the way I thought it, it doesn't feel as good as I thought it was going to feel. Like I have to rethink the whole rhythm of the song. Has that ever happened? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, I think there's parts where I, you know, I'll, I'll think, okay, well I want it to go from this beat to this beat or maybe there's a way I don't have a transition here. So Mm -hmm. maybe a cool fill has to come into play so that, um, to slow it down a little bit, you know, from a fast punk beat to a, a a bigger, more open beat. So a lot of times I have to, you know, I'm not a drummer. Um, I've never learned how to play drums. So I, I have to kind of defer to him on that and say, Hey, you know, what do you think, what should we do right here? Um, how could we kind of open this up a little bit more and, and, and let it breathe a little bit. So, 
uh, yeah, there, and then there's other times where maybe we've tr I've tr I'm trying to do something too complicated, <laughs> you know, and I'll, I'll you know he'll be like, okay, well maybe we need to slow it down a little bit or, or change it up. So, um, and, I, and I'm always open to that too, you know. Um, I'm not the kind of person that's like, um, if somebody has a better idea, I'm definitely open to that to make the song better. And um, you know, I think even even for myself, certain guitar parts or bass parts, I might. Uh, add in like once I get into the studio and actually start playing it, I'm like, oh well, this part maybe I had this bass fill in there and it sounds better if I just leave it out, or maybe a bass part would sound better going into this chorus, you know, a bass part, uh, a fill or something like that. So yeah, that's cool. So getting into the other side of it, like, what's the inspiration? You know, what are you writing about? What are you singing about? Oh, dude, that that was uh, that is a big question, and and that's kind of part of the part of the reason why uh, I wanted to, you know, that I've been doing so many podcasts, and that I've really kind of sparked up like my music, um, you know, songwriting more and putting myself out there. And we, we've been doing doing a lot of playing out of town. Is uh, right before COVID hit, um, like literally a couple months before COVID hit, uh, me and my ex wife separated, and um, I moved out of our house two weeks before everything shut down and we went into like lockdown, um, which, which was actually probably a good thing, um, you know, for, for both she and I, but, uh, but for me, it was like, I had all this, I had a lot of time to just be on my own. <laughs> um, right. I had a lot of time to just kind of like think about things. Um, uh, you know, I was working from home. I was in a one bedroom apartment and, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't play music. I don't know about you. I wasn't really super inspired at the beginning of COVID. I think a lot of, a lot of people were saying, oh, well, this is a great time to sit down and like with your guitar and write songs and everything. And I didn't have that creative spark, like right at the beginning, I kind of went straight into like, this is depressing. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I, just yeah. I was uh, busy because we did live streams. So we, we did, I did yeah. solo live streams for a while. Like every week I would do one. And that was a way of keeping myself distracted, keeping my, giving myself a job, um, a job to do, you know, and I've, I think I've talked about this on the podcast a little bit, but like during COVID, uh, some people went crazy. Everybody went a little crazy, right? But like it depended on what you had to do. You know, if you were overworked, that was too much. If you were underworked, uh, not, you know, you're sitting in your apartment watching Netflix over and over and over. You watch every episode of better call Saul, um, yes. <laughs> which I haven't, you know, because I'm, I'm only on season two, so no spoilers, oh. but, uh, <laughs> I'm on the last episode of season six right now. Like literally I'm going to watch it today. <laughs> that is crazy. See, uh, I'll get back to my point, but, uh, I've started watching it on flights. So I'll, okay. when I have a flight, I'll start watching, I'll like watch four or five episodes. And so every night I don't watch it a lot during the week or during my normal home life or whatever, but it's like my little like, okay, I know I'm going to like this. I'm going to go boom, 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 watch a bunch of episodes. So that's what I do on flights. <laughs> <laughs> Working it. That's the new thing anyway. Um, Definitely passes the time. Yeah. So so during COVID, you know, we were keeping ourselves busy. I was keeping myself busy by doing the live streams. And, and in my mind, you know, cultivating a community, someplace where people could go every week if they had nowhere else to go, you know, so like, Hey, at least I get a free concert, whatever. It's, it was this new thing. Cause live streams were new, you know, I mean, not that they were new, but they were now happening so much more than we'd ever seen, you know? So it was, um, it was like an experiment, an experimentation a lot, but, uh, it helped me stay sane. I'll tell you that much. Um, but the creativity did come after that. Started writing a bunch of songs. We have, you know, MXPX has a new album that we're, trying to finish up right now. So, uh, working on new stuff, but yeah. Tell me more about songwriting. Once you did sure. get creative, you're working at home. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, you know, for the first couple of months, I was definitely in that weird state of like, just this weird new reality of like, we can't go anywhere. We can't do anything. Um, you know, shortly after that, like I, 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 I met a woman, uh, who was to deal with today, today, my, my girlfriend, Lisa, we just moved in together. So, uh, life is pretty good right now. Fast forward, like three years, three years later, but, uh, it wasn't until that summer that I really sat down with my guitar again and went back, started going down to my studio every night. And, and 
working out a lot of the feelings and emotions that I had from uh, not only not only the, the the separation and divorce from my ex wife, but like I had my own business for five years and I and I shut that down. I got a job. I moved out. Um, you know, I, I had kind of left a lot of things behind. I, I moved out of a house that I lived in for ten years. So like all these things that that were new. And uh, music was really the thing for me that that uh, also kept me sane. That it was really kind of it's a very cathartic thing for me, even if I'm just writing a song that might not get on an album or an EP or be released as a single. Uh, I, I like to write songs just to like get my emotions out and work through it. It's like, it's very therapeutic for me. So um, if you listen to our EP uh, that's out, Rewrite the Story, um, all the songs are about, pretty much about that. Um, there's, a, there's one song on there for what it's worth that's about um, people passing, people in your life passing away and um, uh, stuff like that. But all the other songs are about, um, you know, moving on and, and leaving kind of your old life behind and how, how that can be exciting and terrifying at the same time. Um, so I really, that, that was really what I, what I've been focused on. And, and even some of the new, newer songs, um, you know, we have a new album coming out later this year and, and some of those songs are still about that process of moving on and, and, you know, do you stay in a situation that's not so good for you or do you try to move on? At, do you try to stick around and make it better or do you just like cut your life losses and move on? Um, right. But I will also say that there's a lot of happier songs about, um, you know, now, like I said, my life, um, I just turned 40 a couple months ago and like life has been really good. And I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm like, you would think that as you get older, like I, I didn't think that I would be living this kind of life when I was 40. I thought I'd be like a crotchety old man. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't. I guess I never thought about it honestly. Like, it's way, I wake up and realize my age, and I'm like, yeah, I guess I don't feel any different. I, I feel like I've always felt just a slight. I know different things, and I've forgotten things that I used to know. And you know, it's like they say about the the moon landing. We don't have the technology anymore. Like, what? How do you forget? Uh, okay, I've forgotten a lot yeah. of things, but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was going to ask, like, yeah, it, it is strange as a songwriter because I get a lot of my 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 best stuff from heartache. My best my best work is heartbreak. My best work is negativity, is yeah. something sad. And then, but also, you know, you know, I tell myself that, and then I think about some of the songs, and there's some of the songs that some of our best songs are so up, uplifting or just even lighthearted. Um, and so, how do you? How do you, with a mindset that you're like, I'm pretty happy. How do I write that without sounding weird or cheesy or how does that go? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> tough, man. It's like, it's, I, I agree with you. I think the, that's the challenge is how do I kind of write th this song that's relatable to people? Um, because I think, I think a lot of the, the more relatable songs are the ones that are the more, uh, you know, down and out, like, uh, depressing songs, negative songs, because I think people can relate to that. But um, now, I, you know, I try to mix in a little bit of like, I was here and now I'm here, that kind of uplifting thing that you're, that you're saying, especially mm -hmm. on some of my newer songs that I've been, uh, that are on the album, but even newer than that, like, okay, I was in this really shitty situation and now I'm in a better situation and here's how I got there. And maybe people will hear that and that'll be an inspiration to them that, you know, you can't, it will get better. It can get better. Um, you know, but it's, it, yeah, the hardest part for me is, is, you know, <laughs> you don't want to write a song that's just like, Oh, I'm ha I mean, well, I mean, Pharrell did write uh, because I'm happy, I'm so happy. <laughs> you know, huge hit. <laughs> it's a big hit. So, hit. <laughs> you yeah. know, but how, that's, that's still been a challenge that I'm trying to figure out is how do I write these songs that are kind of happy and, and, um, you know, but don't sound super cheesy and just, you know, uh, cliche. So, um, I, I also really like songs with kind of a little bit of a more minor tone too. Um, that not, not like heavy or hard, like a hardcore song, but I, I like songs that kind of have a little bit of a melancholy feel to them. So like, um, almost a, the, the music sounds sad, but the lyrics are happy. I think that is maybe a little bit more relatable too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to work on that. Absolutely. No, it's always something to work on. And that, and you also had to have to just let yourself write whatever comes out too. That's the thing. It's like, I try not to like overthink that. I just, 
Yeah, think about, okay, I want to write a happy song. I'm feeling happy. Let's write a happy song. Cool. But sometimes you have an idea that's just like, that sounds sick. Okay, let's just work on that. And, and so, like, you're not even thinking happy, sad. You're just thinking cool song. But then eventually you have to make those decisions. And, like, you're already down this path. At least I'm just kind of talking from experience. Like, I, I just have to let myself go there anyway, even if it's not the song I wanted to write initially. But it's like yeah. what my muse gave me, whatever you call that, right? Like what the ether gave me. <laughs> so, but music kind of seems to have changed over the years where it was, you know, maybe early, early days, it was a traditional thing. It was something we do as a, as a, a ritual. Um, you know, you, you think about like the monks and the, the different choirs and things like that. But then, you know, with rock and roll and with, um, you know, you use music for, for weddings, you use music to like accompany you in life, really. It is the soundtrack. But thinking about how it's changed from entertainment and, and all these other things we I just said, uh, to almost therapy, right? Therapy for the writer, because it was th always therapy for us, you know, as kids writing songs, right? Like you you didn't maybe realize it, but you're like, why am I why do I feel so good writing this and, and then singing this song? You know, it's cause it's therapy, yeah. you know, and then and I think that the, the, the idea that humans always have that desire to belong. So that's another thing. I made this here, you know, like I made this song, check this out people. Um, and now, you know, it's become therapy for not just the, the artist or the, the song, the kid in the, in the bedroom writing a song, but it's become for anybody listening, you know, you can get something out of music. Oh, there's all these categories, right? Workout category. Uh, yeah, romance category, pop dance category, you know, like road trip. Category. Yeah. Moods. It's all moods instead of, you know, an artist or a, you know, which is, there's nothing, I'm not saying there's, I'm just pointing out that things have changed, you know? So yeah, music is, is, uh, it's going to continue to evolve. Absolutely. Um, the way we, the, the, what we use it for probably will continue to evolve as well. But it's cool that it's it's helping helping out a lot of people here. Absolutely, absolutely, and I think that's one thing that you kind of that you touched on in there was like that that feeling of belonging. Like, um, you know, I I connected with with punk rock when I was when I was a kid. MXPX was one of the first bands that I really one of the first punk bands that I ever heard that really kind of got me into it. And then, you know, that's what I'm really looking for in, in all the music that I listen to is that that connection. Um, mm -hmm. sometimes I don't even know what, uh, what, what the lyrics are, or what a band is it, like, what exactly they're singing, singing about, you know, not every song is like is painting a picture. Like I was walking down the street, you know, it, it doesn't, Oh, not every song is, is like, is straightforward with the lyrics, you know, and you don't really know exactly what the writer of the song is singing about, but you can connect with, the tone of the song, the vocals, the delivery, all of that, you know what I mean? Um, so it, it really means a lot to me when people, <clears throat> you know, we've really, really, I've really been pushing to like get our music heard just outside to as many people as possible. And I've had people from Austria and Brazil and Canada and uh, people all over the United States message me after they find our music and say, Hey, this, this song is fucking awesome. And you know, I can't stop listening to it. And that, you know, not, not that that like, um, you know, of course it gives you a little stroke to your ego. <laughs> yeah, <of laughs> like I'm course. not going to lie. It makes you feel good. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, oh, well they're connecting with the song as well. And that, that, that's helping them in some way. So, um, it definitely does serve a purpose. Yeah. I dig it. So, I mean, can I pull up like, uh, what's left of me? Just a couple of clips so people can kind of hear. Sure. I really yeah. like, I really like your riffage, you know, there's, um, a song called Far From Yesterday yeah. that, that's uh, got a really cool riff on it and stuff. So let me, so uh, what's left, uh, wait, what's left of me? Let me, let me start with that. Cause okay. that's, that's on the EP we were just talking about. Rewrite yes. the story. So that's kind of like, here we go. Here's the story. what people want to hear. <laughs> I 
you love that fast like, Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So you're telling stories here. You're telling stories. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so there's that one. That's what's left of me. Um, far from yesterday. Let me, let, me, let me play a little clip of that here. This is the riff, though. Yeah, I like that riff. <laughs> yeah, it's got a vibe with it, you know? <laughs> I can't stop running from myself. But I don't want to be somebody else. Yeah. Building some tension there, you know, like, I like that. That's cool. Well, man, I mean, I think, I think people are going to check it out as, as you just keep being yourself, you know, and that's, that's what it is, is, is you just put yourself out there and you have no fear. I can see it. I can see it in your eyes. You are the captain now. Like, and that's what it is, is like no expectations. Just, just, let's just try. You know, and I feel like people that just don't give up and they just, they, they see, you know, one door closes, they find another way. And and that's, yeah. that's what I feel like when I listen to this music, you know? Oh, thank it's you, good. man. That, that means a lot. I, I think, I think honestly too, you know, something that before when I, when I first started playing, when I played music, I always kind of had this attitude of like, well, I just kind of this, I didn't have the confidence. And in my mind, I was always like, well, I think this is kind of good. And I, I hope you come to our show and like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like just not having that, that aspect of like, well, you know, when I wrote what's left of me, I think that was the first song that I wrote for that EP. Um, and that's our most listened to song. And that's, that's the one that I think everybody really connects with the most. Um, but I remember thinking, this is good. This is a very good song. This is a song that I want to listen to. And I'm not going to be afraid, especially, you know, as you get older, I'm like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm not going to be afraid to get, sh send someone a link to a song and say, I would really like for you to listen to this song. I think it's good. You know what I mean? And and I feel like that confidence has helped me, um, you know, and I thought, I've, I've, I've actually, anytime that I've reached out to somebody and been like, hey, you know, I've never had anybody be like, fuck you, man. I'm not listening to your song. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, well, I mean, maybe people don't respond, but like I, at, at the, the best case scenario is they listen to it and they love it. And you know, they, they share it with somebody else and you don't know if, you, if you're not able to try uh, to, you know, willing to try to do that. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely something that I feel like has changed for me. And, and that took, that took a while of, of sitting in, in, in my studio and writing songs and trying to get it, you know, getting to a place where I felt like this is a really good song and, I, and I'm happy to share it with people. Yeah. And I think, you know, the fact that you have a story, you have a, you have a, a backstory, but you also have a story right now. It, it's going to bring a lot of people together. Like you said, the connection to those songs and that, that, that's what you should run with. Just keep running with that. And, and I think people are going to continue to connect being honest, being driven. That's what people are looking for, at least in the punk rock community. I can't speak to like Wall Street and all of them. They're not looking for real, <laughs> probably. But right, right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need them anyway. You know, like we're going to exist no matter what. It's like that. that's the attitude that I have in, in life. And um, I was with you too, like first couple record. Well, pff, even the last record, I was probably like, I hope people like it, you know, like, but... <laughs> man, you're so right. Like even I need to hear sometimes that, yeah, there's probably a reason you're still doing this. Like have humility, do a good job, write sure. good songs, but, but when they're good, be proud of them. That's what you're saying. Be proud of your work. And if you can't be proud of your work, what is wrong with your work? What's really, I mean, 
that's going to give people a complex. But like for me, <laughs> if if there's something that I don't want people to hear, the song's not ready. You know, like th there's just right. that's a clear, you know, and if it's a video, a music video, if there's something weird about it, I don't want people to see that yet. You know, like so. Yeah, you just have to trust yourself in that regard. But I think you're winning. I think you're yeah. winning out. Oh, dude, thank you. Well, no, I, I and to, to just piggyback off that, I feel I feel like if I'm not confident enough to give it to somebody, then I'm not ready to, then I haven't gotten to the place yet where I, I put in enough time or work to feel like this is a good enough product to give to someone, you know what I mean? Yeah. To show to them, like, you should listen to it, you know? If I'm looking at even a t-shirt design or, uh, you know, a grab poster or something like that, and I'm like, this is fucking awesome, I want somebody to, like, I think this is really cool, um, you know, then, then I know that it's time, so, and... I also do want to say the last album was really, really good. So <laughs> the <laughs> last time I PX album, yeah, I just listened to it all the way through a couple of days ago again. So yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan. Thank you. That's, that means a lot. Appreciate that. Yeah, man. I mean, it's like, it, no matter what, like Motley Crue puts out bad records. I mean, like they're a huge rock band, you know, it's like things like that. It's like, you have to be on your game, no matter what level you're at. Like if you're, if you're, you know, at, at the entry level or whatever, for whatever reason, you have to be on your game because then you're not going to get up. If you're, if you're up, I mean, there's, there's obviously like you two, isn't going to go broke if they put out a bad record. They've obviously, they've done that. So, right. <laughs> and I'm a fan of you too. I mean, you two is like, I saw their zoo TV tour live, you know, it's like early on, but, um, but yeah, I guess it's just, it's just fun to think about. I, I, I put, a, put a lot of like mental, thought experiments in my head about these things that's annoying to most people i'm sure <laughs> mental models <laughs> sometimes you just got to get out there and do it and, and in fact most of the times like uh right now i'm i'm we're i'm, I'm not doing it myself i'm doing it with uh rick rick vaughn and and um and uh <laughs> rick vaughn's a guy at my studio that like helps me build all the stuff so anyway, we're, we're redoing the control room completely, but I'm like finishing out some of the finishing things. And we have a desktop that's just like a piece of wood that I'm like, I, f I finished it and I just didn't like the way it, it turned out. So like, now I'm like in this cycle of trying to figure out <laughs> how to finish this wood to where I'm happy with it. And it's reminding me of writing a song. It's reminding me of making an album or whatever it is, you know, it's just like, Okay, when I'm happy with this, I will put it in the desk and it's done. But I'm not I'm not happy with this. It's not ready for human consumption. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Exactly. And uh, dude, I would say uh, you know, we we have an album coming out um and and that was something that I really struggled with was writing an EP. I can put together five songs, five or six songs that go together as a cohesive thing. Mm -hmm. But writing 10 songs that kind of all go together um, you know, our ba I went back and forth with our bass player, Jacob, multiple times. And I, uh, cause we've been friends for a really long time and I always really trust his opinion and what he has to say. And, um, I was just kind of like, yeah, I think this is a good song, but like, you know, I, I don't, I don't know how it fits on an album or I don't know how, how it fits as like this bigger cohesive thing. And like, did you ever have any, um, feelings like that? Like, oh man, the, you know, it's way different. Why writing one song a standalone song is just so much different than like trying to write a collection that all flows together. And then, you know, but then sometimes some of the songs I saw, okay, I, once I saw it, it listed out and listened to it in like succession to each other. It made sense, you know? Yeah. Every album for us is a struggle as far as what to put on the album, what fits together, what, what is this album sounding like? Okay. Now we have an album. Like when, how we do it is, is we won't even have an album we'll just be, I'll just be writing songs. And when I finally write a batch of songs, then I'll start bringing it to the band a little by little. And we're not thinking album. We're just thinking, this is a one-off. This is a one-off. And because some of those songs can be one-offs and it's so much easier to write, re practice, record, whatever, one song. I mean, you can, yeah. you can really, I don't know what it is, the psychology of it. As soon as you have more than one song, it completely changes the dynamic. But, um, as far as like, okay, n this feels like an album. Like we have, if we if there's a couple songs that we're you know going through that might be singles, and they ended up okay. This that's what happened with this album. You know, we we weren't 
weren't planning, okay, now we're going to start recording a new record or this or that. It was more like, oh, okay, we're ready. Now we're, now we're in practice, practicing for shows, but we're wanting to play new songs before yeah. we practice the set. That's usually like, you know, the telltale sign of new MXPX. So. For sure. <laughs> but I noticed you put out a lot of singles. You, you put out a single, and then you'll put out another single, but then that single has the single before uh, yeah. on the same track listing or, or whatever. So it's like a little two-songer. And then you might do another single, you know, and then you do that single has three songs, the, the two songs from before. So no matter what you click on, if you click on the latest one, you get all the songs. You click on the other one, you get two, one now, how's that been working for you? That's been um, that's been pretty good, man. Uh, you know, I I saw I I've seen some other bands doing that. That was in like preparation for our uh, EP, mm -hmm. and that's what we'll do for the album too. So we have like two songs that are off the album right now, um, "Where Summer Never Ends" and "A Second Too Soon." And kind of my thought behind that was like, you know, if somebody's new to the band and this is the first time that they've heard this single and they've discovered it, then you know, immediately after that, they listen to the first song, it'll go into the next single and they'll hear another one and maybe they'll want to listen more, um, you know, and it also kind of helps get your stream numbers up and going a little bit too. So yeah. um, I, I feel like it, so far it's been pretty good. Um, I think like what Spotify will do is if you, once it hits four songs though, um, it counts as it as an EP. <laughs> okay. So I think I'm going to cap it at like three songs, you know, and then I'll just start over and, 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 you know, I won't, I won't do it that way again. So, um, but we'll probably release, I want to release, uh, two more singles off of the album before the album drops and the album should be out later this year in November. Um, we're going to, so, so we, we just recently signed with jumpstart records. Um, we're going to release it out on vinyl. Um, first time doing a vinyl release. So super stoked about that. First time working with a label like jumpstart. Um, that's cool. Yeah. We worked with them on plans within plans, I think, or yeah. something, yeah. which one was, it? yeah, I think it was that. Yeah. I, I, I remember that. I remember that. I, I remember seeing, uh, seeing it like on vinyl or something like that. So yeah. um, that was super cool. Super exciting for me that they, they used to, they worked with like a Wilhelm scream and, um, Belvedere and off with their heads and some, other really cool bands that that um you know was definitely really exciting for yeah. me when, when they were like hey you know we we want to put this album out so um yeah we're working on getting it out on vinyl and uh hopefully like november it'll be out later this year so but but the struggle with that is uh you know now i've almost written an entire i've probably got like 12 or 13 new songs um already written for like the next batch of, of songs that we're going to release. So um, these songs that'll be out on the new album in November, by the time they come out, some of these songs will be like two years old. <laughs> yeah. But nowadays it's kind of nothing because, you know, the, the, because of the internet, you, you, people are hearing things that were released 10 years ago for the first time, you know, like, yeah. boom, like, where have I, you know, you might not even realize it's from 10 years ago. You're just hearing it as a new song. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about that. That's the music business. Welcome to it. Things take a long time, especially on a record label. So when you're recording, are you, you're just kind of just doing it in your bedroom. So you're not spending a lot of money. Even if there was a budget, you wouldn't be spending a lot, but are you just recording it all and mixing it all yourself and then taking that and going, okay, jumpstart, here's the record. So it's a licensing thing or are they giving you like a full budget? Uh, so, so with, I, what I did with this was I, I, I demoed everything out on, on just on GarageBand, you know, and then we went into a studio, we have a, a studio here called Encapsulated Studios, um, in St. Louis, and that's where we've recorded everything so far. Um, some of the early, earlier mm. recordings that we did, we recorded ourselves. Okay. Okay. So you're not recording your records on GarageBand that I'm hearing. No, no. Okay. I was like, like a, back. A, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I don't want to make a big deal about it, about it, but I was thinking in the back of my mind, that sounds good for GarageBand. Like, what? <laughs> Why am I spending money on Pro Tools? Yeah, what yeah. is this? That was definitely done in a professional studio <laughs> by somebody who knows how to like mix and master like way better than me. You know, so um, okay, I got you. Uh, yeah, his it name is Gabe Uthry. I want to give him a shout out because 
Um, he's now done an EP and a full length album for us. And, and, um, he, he absolutely killed it and did a great job. So one more yeah, time, what's his name? Gabe Ussery. Uh, it's U S E R Y. All right. Um, Gabe yeah. shout out St. Louis. So, um, yeah, so he, he's recorded all that, um, you know, and he did a great job of kind of like leading that process. And, uh, you know, he, he really pushed us in a lot of ways and helped us kind of like produce the record too. like, uh, you know, hey, maybe this needs something here or maybe you just take that out. And, you know, just those little things that maybe you yourself don't pick up on when you're, you know, because it's your song and, and you just don't maybe hear it the, the same way somebody else does. Um but yeah, with Jumpstart, uh, the way I kind of did it was I, I completely, I had the album totally recorded, um, mixed and mastered by Gabe as well. And then, um, you know, I, I I got it ready to to start to send to labels and everything and see, hey, you know, who wants to maybe put this out? So uh, Jump Jeremy from Jumpstart was one that um, I had actually reached out to him like last August when we put out the first single from it. And, um, you know, he was like, hey, I, I kind of want to, you know, I want to hear more from you guys. I, I, I like your stuff, but, you know, I definitely want to hear the full album once it's out. And so we kept recording and then um, I sent it to him. We we sent it to every label that we possibly could. Um, I, I have a manager, too, that, that was helping me, like, kind of shop it around and stuff like that. Um, but as you said, Mike, um, it takes a very, the music industry takes a very long time. You know, people would say, oh yeah, we'll listen to it. And then a month later, they, they still hadn't listened to it or, mm -hmm. you know, um, or a lot of labels, you know, surprisingly enough, which was a really cool thing for me was we had a lot of labels say, hey, we really like this. It's awesome. But if you want to try to put it out this year, like we already have so many releases lined up, like we just don't, can't give it the time and attention that, that it deserves. So, um, that's cool. Uh, you know, you yeah. never used to hear that ever. So. Wow. Props to somebody out there in the, in the industry. That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. It was super cool to, to hear that from people, but um, yeah, I mean, jumpstart has a great, uh, they have some really cool bands on the label right now. And uh, we went on tour with a band earlier this year called bad planning out of Chicago. Um, and they had nothing but good things to say about working with jumpstart. They, they put on an album out with them. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked to, um, for me, it's just really cool to have like a name on the back of our record, you know, that's like, it just makes it a little bit more official, <laughs> you yeah. know, but they're definitely helping us, you know, get it on vinyl. I don't know how that process works. It seems very complicated and like, uh, tedious. So, uh, we're definitely, I'm, I'm glad to have somebody who knows what, what he's doing and, and, uh, who's been doing it for a long time, uh, help us and kind of lead that process. So. Yeah, it's, it's very complicated. It's basically like, you know, if you've ever eaten pancakes, like pouring syrup on your pancakes, you got to just do that for every single record and then you bake it. And I think that's how it works anyway. I don't know. <laughs> and then they, pre they press it down. And and yeah, squish it. Yeah, yeah. Hot yeah. poop, hot poop. There's a, a record store in Walla Walla, Washington, where my sister lives called Hot Poop. And it's named after what vinyl looks like before they press it. it looks like yeah. hot poop. I'll have to go there someday. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's pretty famous for just the name itself, I think. Pretty I'm pretty sure that's why. <laughs> Good marketing, <for> sure. <laughs> well, Wes, what's, you know, we I can't wait for November, uh new record. I, I assume you're just going to keep putting out music as you go a little bit and just keep doing podcasts and playing shows. So, um anything of note you want to get out, you know, before we we wrap this baby up? Hell yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, basically what, what you said, you know, uh, we're, we're going to keep playing shows. We're going to keep, um, uh, putting out some music. Hopefully we'll have a, a new music video out before the album comes out too. Um, we have a few videos out. The videos are super fun to do. And it, I feel it's like, it just, it, it gives an extra depth to the song to have a music video for, for a single. So Absolutely. Uh, we want to do one of those, um, uh, and, uh, before the album's out, uh, and then, yeah, so we're, we actually, we're going on tour next week. I'm not sure, uh, when this episode will be out, but Monday, uh, uh this Monday. Oh, okay. That quick. Okay. Awesome. Man, you're you turning it around quick. I like it. Um, <laughs> What's there to do? <laughs> I do these things like the night before sometimes, but yeah, don't tell anybody. 
No, no, it's all it's all good, man. Um, <laughs> so we're going. Uh, you know, we're from St. Louis, but we honestly haven't been playing here. We've been really focused on like going out of town as much as possible this year. Um, we're probably only going to play in St. Louis like four or five times this year. So, uh, but we're we're doing a hometown show uh, next this Friday the nineteenth. And then um, we're going to play in St. Joseph, Missouri, which is like right outside of Kansas City. Uh, and then uh, we have a show in Denver at the Larimer Lounge. Uh, we're doing like a short run with this band called uh, pop punk band called Years Down. And then in June, we uh, uh, we have uh, we're doing some Canada dates. So we're flying out to Canada. Uh, we're going to play Quebec City at this place called uh, La Source. And uh, then uh, we have a we have a, a Canadian label as well called Wrecking Crew Records that is uh, their owner also their owner John owns a, a venue up there and we're gonna play like their first year anniversary um, of their their venue being open awesome. so that's Ramouski uh, Quebec which is like three hours north on the river from uh quebec city so we played yep we played up there <laughs> yeah yeah how i've heard canada is awesome like, oh dude a, it's so like, sick i mean especially french canada for punk rock they love punk rock they love rock they love metal they love all that hardcore so yeah i mean we'll be up there july 1st um we're playing okay. festivois and Ooh. it's in trois Rivière, which is outside uh outside it's like in between quebec city and montreal it's like Okay. between there but anyway um yeah man we always try to go back up up to canada um they just love punk rock they're such great people and and they they love their festivals too but um so ramuski i'm trying to like think of i think we've played there a few times but i always ask yuri uh when i need details yuri always remembers anytime about a city he's like oh yeah we played there and in uh, 1999, yes. <laughs> That's not what Yuri sounds like at all. I'm sorry, Yuri. I apologize. He's not listening. So. <laughs> but anyway, dude, that sounds exciting. Yeah. Um, where can people find all the infos for you guys so that they're not like, ah, Googling just random things? I, I live pretty, like, I mean, I do some stuff on TikTok, but not as frequently. But um, I, I pretty much live on Instagram. It's just okay. at Wesley Hoffman on on instagram and then you can hit my link in my bio there and uh we have uh you know we'll have spotify it'll be links to any merch or music videos youtube um all that stuff uh so just at wesley hoffman on instagram and that's what my twitter is as well so excellent excellent website or no i don't have a website yet i just kind of use my band camp. it's westhoffman.bandcamp.com is like my you know, what, what I kind of use where all our music lives and like Good. our bio and everything, but I need to get a website, I need a website up where it just has everything. So, yeah, I mean, you can use Bandcamp for now, but eventually you probably probably do, but that's another podcast. That's a whole nother episode. Okay. <laughs> what to do? <laughs> what do we need now? A lot, but, um, dude, I'm excited for you. I'm glad you're doing well. Good to see you. Good to catch up, man. Yeah, you too. I, I appreciate it, man. It was good to just kind of catch up and, and chill and um i hope you're doing well also it's it seems like it yeah yeah busy busy <laughs> just a, a lot of projects multiple plates and projects spinning and uh one of those is a new amix peaks album but um oh, excited <laughs> thank you thanks wes oh uh, yes we did it so i want to thank my guest wes hoffman like i always do thanks for your time um thank you guys for checking it out if you haven't already subscribed rated reviewed the podcast i would love for you to do that do the things that you're supposed to do when you listen to a podcast um and of course call in 360-830-6660 leave me a voicemail you know the drill let's go i need some more need stack some more up um Aside from that, mxpx.com, we are working on some new merch and some things to titillate the senses. So uh, stay tuned. And you know what? We are going to be at Festival July 1st. That's in Quebec. That's in Trois-Rivières, Canada, Quebec, Canada. It's going to be amazing. That's that's what we're like, kind of like gearing up for right now. We're like starting to practice and get the set list together and all that. And, um, and then Furnace Fest, September 22nd. That's a Friday night. That is going to be the epic show of epic shows. No no ifs, ands, buts. Maybe some big ones. Big what's? Big butts. All right. I've had enough. <laughs> let's, let's be done with this. MXBigs.com. Love you guys. And uh, thanks for listening. All right. I'll see you on the, I'll see you on the thing.
Bye. Bob! Shout out to Bob for producing. <laughs> Goodness. All right, see you, brother. This is, this is, this is.